Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review the new mystery thriller straight out of Australia, The Dry. And this is from writer-director Robert Connolly, and I haven't really seen any Connolly's work, but he seems to be a pretty successful, consistently working artist in Australia. And this film stars Eric Bana, actually in a movie, which was interesting. I haven't seen him in a while. But so Eric Bana plays this federal agent who returns to his hometown because of a funeral after one of his childhood friends suspected of murdering his family and then killing himself. He returns for the funeral, digs up some history with one of the women from town, uh, Gretchen, played by Genevieve O'Reilly, and also some feelings about a young woman that he had love for when they were kids who wound up drowned in a river and there's a lot of mystery around what happened with that and this film really focuses on this mystery of well kind of a two-pronged mystery what happened in both of these situations and ban is at the center of it trying to figure out what happened and this film is really well shot first of all and cinematographer Stefan Duskio is really great in terms of these tracking shots, the framing of everything, really capturing the beauty and the starkness of this drought-ridden Australian town because, which, a film's called The Dry, and yes, there's this big drought going on, it has been going on for a long time, and it's one of those kinds of films where it's like that thing actually plays into the movie, which is actually pretty cool. So, in a lot of some films, that might just be like a tacked on thing just to play with it. Like, uh, Those Who Wish Me Dead, did there really need to be a fire there? Maybe not. But the thing is, this film, that really digs deep into it. It's like the man who's accused of killing his family is found in a dried up lake. And the climax of the film incorporates that as a threat. And I appreciated how that worked. But going back to it's really well shot and how they capture everything in this film. And the music is really well done. It's very atmospheric. It has this somberness to it. This isn't a film where it's like an uplifting kind of film. It's this dour diving back into a life that you used to know and really dealing with the consequences and the things that you left behind that you've been running through and running from. And you have the score by Peter Rayburn, which is a really great score. And it captures these bells at certain points that really give it a ethereal kind of feel to it, especially in a very climactic, revealing scene later in the film, the score works very effectively, and Eric Bana is a really solid lead here. He's not doing anything particularly, like, this isn't going to be something where I'm like, he should win an Oscar for this, but, like, he does a really, really fine job in the central role carrying this film, and even when he has some mo moments of a little bit more emotion, it works. And you have Keir O'Donnell, who I remember first seeing in Paul Blart Mall Cop. He's been American Sniper and Wedding Crashers. And he's this little bit of a bumbling police officer in this small town that teams up with Banna, is working with him. He's very brave, though, and will stand up for what's right. And you have Genevieve O'Reilly, who's a great addition as Gretchen, who has some more emotional moments. This film, when it's focusing on this, like rebirth of some feelings between Aaron, our main character, and Gretchen, that really works. And I have to give a shout out because I was sitting there watching this film and I started realizing that this was an Australian film because I didn't know right off the bat. When I saw the credits and Bruce Spence popped up and I'm like, yes! So as a huge fan of Mad Max, Bruce Spence is the gyro captain. And I'm like, he's in this movie? It made me so happy. And this is like the most normal thing I've ever seen him play in. He's just the dad of the man who supposedly killed his family. And he gets some great moments in this film, and he does some good dad acting. And, you know, he's been the gyro captain. He was the leader of Utapau that 
uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi speaks to in Revenge of the Sith. He was the train man in Matrix Revolutions. He was the mouth of Sauron who gets cut out of Return of the King, but it's in the extended editions. And he's also in the La and Voyage of the Dawn Treader in Chronicles of Narnia. He was in Dark City. He just pops up in some things, like big properties, and it made me really happy to see him in this. So, just a side note, that's more of a personal thing. All of the rest of you sitting here watching this video is like, who? Doesn't matter. Just got me excited. But this has a really strong cast, it's really well shot, and I think Connolly does a great job of building an atmosphere around this film. Now, it's very methodical, and I think that could harm it at some points, especially in the second act, because like this is a solid two-hour movie. It could have moved along, I think, a little bit in some places, but overall, I was caught hook, line, and sinker in this. And even if it's a little complicated, the plot here, once you get towards that point where you finally find out what really happened between the mix of the detective work, because, like, this is a federal agent, like, they actually do these things, it's good detective work, they have some effective flashbacks to when he's younger, building the suspense and the mystery about this young woman who was found drowned, and you get a pow-pow of payoffs at the end of this film to, like, the main murder that brought him the main murder that brought him back to his hometown and how that set up and incorporates the drought and things like that, it made for a really compelling and intense finale. And then you get the cap to this mystery that's been going all the way through, which that's the real emotional anchor and hook of the film that just hits you. And it's a really sad revelation, but it really hit, and it gave Banna a nice moment as an actor to really sink in with that. And honestly, digging this Australian cinema that I've been seeing between this and High Ground, these are two high up there films that I've seen this year, and I'm very excited to tell everybody about them. Y'all should check out the High Ground, check out High Ground and The Dry. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.